to the second Eastport Gallery Art Talk for 2020. We are celebrating our 35th anniversary here in Eastport in this um, rather unusual year. Um, so the theme of our art talks this year has been art in the virtual world because we've had to do so many things virtually. And uh, we're adjusting as we go. My name is Joan Loudon and I'm a member of the Eastport Gallery and today I will be chatting with Jude Kemp, the president of the Eastport Gallery, and Ann Shields Hopkins, who is also my co-organizer of the Eastport Art Walk project, which has been a lot of fun. And we're going to be talking about virtual galleries, online art workshops and gatherings, and how we have responded to COVID by moving things online either partially or entirely. Phew. Well, anyway, welcome, and thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, I'm going to start with Anne, because last February, which seems like 5,000 lifetimes ago, <laughs> I had the chance to interview you for my radio show on WSHD, and we were talking about, you probably don't even remember this, but we were talking about the weekly life drawing sessions at the Eastport Art Center and how you had taken over for Joyce mm -hmm. after many, many years of Joyce Weber, one of the founders of the gallery. And um, so let's start there. Let's start, let's go back. Back in time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Wayne's World. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to go back to that. And tell, tell me, first of all, a little bit, and tell our listeners, a little bit about your background in okay. art and how you got involved in life drawing, which I know is a, a passion of yours. Yeah, it's my figure drawing has been uh, one of my main artistic practices for many years. And right. um, when Joyce last fall requested that I step forward and start hosting life drawing for her. We didn't know any number of things was going to happen. <laughs> First of all, COVID. Second of all, that she was going to pass yeah. in that time. Um, so it was really, it was a, it was a big weight in some ways, but you know, I, I believe in the practice of making every day, of drawing every day, of painting, being creative, singing, uh, being in that artistic practice. And for me, it's a mental health practice. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is for anybody for else. For many of us. For many, many of us, it's a mental health practice. <laughs> and so one of the things that we love about life drawing is that it it's a place where you're really in community and you're making and you also have somebody who's performing mm -hmm. and that relationship and the muse that comes from that is really really amazing and like just the if you've ever gone to a drawing class that that scratch 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 and the oh, the exhales <laughs> and the breaths and everything it's just it's really magical so when covid hit here we were with all of this technology and i thought well, I'm already just sitting around drawing my friends on FaceTime. You know, I'm FaceTiming with all my dear right, loves. Right. And I have three children. And so they are always posing for me. And so I started, I just thought, well, let's just get together and draw. Instead of life drawing, we'll just do portraits. We'll just draw each other's portraits. And we have a really empowering little community that's gathered out of it. So you've moved to Zoom. We've moved to Zoom. Now, the difference, though, in this situation is that you don't have a model. No model. Except you, 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 you model for each other, right? Correct. So let, explain the form, the, kind of the format. Yeah, the we, format. we have a little, you know, a little chat for a moment, and then um, everybody logs in. And then uh, we take turns posing. We do five to 20 minute poses. So this might be a pose. Lately, I've been really into my woodland creature um, <laughs> look. Your muse. And so I would just sit and 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 pose, and we would all do a, a drawing. And at some point, somebody would say, "Are we ready?" Oh, my body hurts. My knees asleep. Whatever <laughs> happens to you. And it's been really neat because we have this now. We have this collection of drawings of each other. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of like I'm picturing you know the Zoom, the Zoom that the Brady Bunch mode, yeah. but with with a bunch of, of hand drawn 
portraits. Yes. In lieu yes. of, of the, 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 the Brady Bunch. And the community part yeah. comes that we really get to share that which we've made sort of instantly with each other in a way that when you're in a drawing class feels a little bit harder somehow. Yeah. 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 There's more of a, a connection. And a lot of just chatting happens while, right. Right. while we're posing. No, you have you must have people from out of town that participate. Yeah, I have someone in Delaware, Illinois, Pembroke, you know. Um, and the drawathons that we do have an even wider, wider. Well, hold reach. that thought because yeah. we're going to talk about the drawathons a little bit later. <laughs> but I did want to. So one of the key components of this is that you happen to be tech savvy. <laughs> yes. So, that, and that's kind of an interesting thing because a lot of artists are not necessarily tech savvy. Um, many of them work in old, mm. uh, traditional, let's say traditional mediums. They tend to be, I shouldn't be stereotyping, but a little more introverted. And um, so it's, it's interesting that you had the capability and you were, you were, it was comfortable for you mm. to easily transfer that original premise from a live situation to a tech situation. Certainly. And I also have a special uh, skills in that I studied communications design at Pratt Institute and that was largely on the computer and um, the ways that we've learned to, to, to communicate and move through space in that way. Um, we're just really the younger generations are just really a lot more fluid yeah. and yeah. like are comfortable forming community. Yeah. And then there's the super younger generation who doesn't want to do any of that. Right, right. <laughs> well, it's like everything. There's a generational gap. Totally. So you at Pratt, you studied all communications design, which is largely a graphic design uh, emphasis. Correct. And art direction. And art direction. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, that is a nice segue because we have another person who's technically savvy. <laughs> for an old it, fart. Hmm? I said for an old fart. For, well, you know, <laughs> a couple of us old farts were, were, were groundbreakers. We're, we're, yes, I mean, we you know, you young farts wouldn't be here without some of us old farts. That's right. We, we, we designed the stuff. That we, you did. Used to we did. We did. Totally. <laughs> we did. I mean, I've told you tales about working on the digital camera in, at Apple in the 80s, but we're not going to go there. We're not, we're the youngster. So, but getting back to it, so you, Jude, have a technical background. Tell us a little bit about your education, and, and I know you worked in digital media and film, and tell us a little bit about that. Well, I started in art. I always wanted to be an artist. I've been a painter and, uh, and started in art photography from the get-go went to Chicago to school at the Art Institute back in the day. And after I graduated, I found, of course, that, um, you know, you can't, you can't get there from here. You, you, you can't be earning money, basically, being a painter, in the, you know. So I had to figure out another way to go. And because I was really interested in photography, I worked, I got jobs in photography, and then I decided to go back to school again, and uh, I ended up going into film and video because it just made a lot of sense to me because I was always interested in all the different facets mm -hmm. of how storytelling and um, and uh, goes together. And you were at Cal Arts for that, right? Uh, no, no, actually, I started oh. at Cal Arts. That kind of got me going, and oh, okay. I was there before I went to the Art Institute. Oh, okay. I, had I, went, that back, I went back and there in the early seventies. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so it was, and that was a great thing because I actually was exposed. I was exposed to music and I took music classes mm -hmm. and I took, um, they, we had a television studio, animation and all that, of course. And um, so I was exposed to a lot of different media at that point in time. Right. And the Moog synthesizer, we had one. And so, you know, it was, that was my early getting to know a little bit about, about technology. So, which has proven uh, convenient, convenient. <laughs> in, in these times. <laughs> now, you've been president of the gallery for wrapping up four years, I believe. Three years. Three years. Yeah. And and um, how long have you been a member of the gallery? Uh, that's a good question. I can't remember. Um, I think it's been approximately let's see, five years, six years. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But you've been Maybe here. Long, you've been in Washington County longer. Than yeah, that. I. Um, 
I, uh, I actually ventured out here in 1967 when I was oh. very, very young, but then I never came back until the, until the 90s, okay. and then I bought property and then built in Pembroke and State. Okay. Yeah. Seasonally. Yeah, 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 because I couldn't be here full time. I, right. I, I was meant to come and live here, but that didn't happen. So. Well, not yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> not yet. So, we got a couple tech-savvy people <laughs> in these strange times. So when it became clear, so, so that the, the gallery is a seasonal operation. We, we run, we're open, theoretically, from June through September. And it became clear around April that, you know, that was not going to be possible. And so we have a 20-member gallery. We weren't sure who was going to, a lot of the people were seasonal. I'd say almost half are seasonal maybe a third, um, but we didn't know who was going to be here, to make it up, who was going to be bringing their art, who was going to be able to work. So you had to pivot. And um, one of the decisions was to create a virtual gallery. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that process. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, it, it, it just, you know, it was obvious. It just made a lot of sense and that that was something that we needed to do. So I started looking around for different kinds of ways to present it. You know, there were, there's all kinds of ways to present it, you know, with a website and, and how you do it on a website, but I kind of thought it would be more interesting to have a form that could be presented on the website, could be presented social media, could be done by whomever. And, um, and I started looking and I found this, the, the page, um, the Adobe, I, had, I have Adobe kinds of software, so. Um, uh, that was like the perfect format mm -hmm. and you know you could share it send it to people they would still be kind of interactive you can you right. know roll through mm -hmm. it read something as well as have the information so we went in that direction and it worked out pretty darn well and then adding a shopping cart as well for yep, on, the, purchase. on the website and Shelly and I coordinated Shelly Weber Shelly Weber is the one that did yeah. the website and she did an amazing yeah. job she had a lot, a lot, a lot to do on that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but one of the challenges for for me as a member has been, you know, the the mechanics are one thing, right? But then the actual execution, as we know, it's all, the devil's in the details. So, it's nice to create this mechanism, but then you've got literally hundreds of pieces that need to be <laughs> photographed and <laughs> uploaded and priced and marked as sold and. And how do you photograph, I mean, one of the challenges, I think, for all of us has been, how do you capture a physical, original piece mm. of art mm. in a two-dimensional image? And I think that, for me, that as a trying to, trying to do that, that's been one of the toughest challenges. Do you mm. have anything, anything to it's, comment? I make her yeah. take my pictures because I'm, she's got a good camera and I don't. <laughs> I mean, it helps, you know, and it helps, I mean, most people, the, the, the iPhones are fabulous. I mean, you know, you can do anything on an iPhone these days. And um, I, I, I ask people to do that, and a lot of times I'll, if people send me whatever photograph, I'll take it and I'll crop mm -hmm. it and work with it, and I can change it just a little bit right. to make it look a little niftier in the gallery, right. you know, on the page. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, people have done really well. They've, you know, it doesn't matter at this, I mean, it was just, the, the point was to get the work out there. The work out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, it turned out, I think it turned out yeah. so everything looked pretty darn nice. Well, and it was yeah. great because we didn't open until August, so two right. months. Yeah. Um, or actually, we started early because you did. We did a couple we did small a, shows. We did a trial, a couple of trials, just yeah. because we weren't sure how it would fly and how if the you know if to coordinate the shopping. I mean, all these right. kinds of things right. were new to us. We just everything was new to us this year. We just kept uh, to everybody hunting. <laughs> you know, to everybody. whatever the next ball that came our way, it was like well, we all well, still we not. still are, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Every day, even still this, yeah, really. <laughs> Even this, we tried doing an art talk with an audience, Ooh, didn't work, bomb. and microphones. So everything we do is reinvented in some way, and that it's been one of the challenges. But also, it's it's satisfying when you somehow are able to respond. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, for me as as a participant, I I do encaustic painting, which is highly textural, and I I found that a real challenge because I feel like the photos just don't capture 
the, the best parts of that art form. Right. And I, you know, so, I mean, I, it's just been a challenge, I think, depending on what medium you're in. Mm -hmm. And even scale, we talked about, you know, oh, yeah. we had pieces where even if you put the dimensions, they look different. You, you can see a photo, we have an example of one that was photographed and it, it, all kinds of detail. Well, mm. it was actually a four by four. <laughs> and, and you didn't actually get that impression when you saw the photo. Right. Mm. Right. So selling original art online is It's tough. a real challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm just grateful that we ended up being able to open and yes. as well as have the other so people could get kind of an idea of the balance there a little bit. Right. And, um, but, you know, this virtual gallery has given us the opportunity to, to now have, you know, shows in the winter online right. and, and people who follow what we do to follow us a little bit more. So that's And, and that's a big opportunity for us because when you're operating, you have the overhead mm -hmm. of a year-round business, but you're only open for a month. So one of the it's interesting things about this whole topic of putting art online mm -hmm. is there's also different perspectives depending on who you are. Are you an individual artist? Are you a gallery with 20 members? And they each present different sets of challenges. So I received an email from Anne today where she was sort of um, summarizing your open driveway event. Talk a little bit about, about that. Um, well, uh, I had this idea as I often do, and this one I executed, of having an open driveway studio show. And so I just like, I've been making and making, I mean, I, I probably paint for one to five hours every day. I like, I like that you called, called it pandemic era multimedia pieces. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so I pulled out all of that and sort of organized it. I covered my whole front porch and, you know, used rocks to weight down all the paper. And of course it got windier and windier throughout the day. And then I, I pulled out all of my paintings, 20 years yeah. worth of paintings, which was, I had never, I never have done that, but I, I really just wanted to see what it all looked like in the daylight mm -hmm. and I did sell a couple pieces which Yay. was really nice um, yeah but it's an interesting thing having a home studio in this moment and you can't really have people into your studio right. I you know I, I've tried to zoom like do a zoom studio if, yeah or I'm, I'm working on an in the studio series where on Friday mornings where we're going to have featured artists okay Sort of um, to replace your coffee. Well, it's going to be kind of like a coffee of hour visiting. What okay. have you been making? What have I been making? Making, but we'll okay. have a, maybe like a Q and A kind of thing. But we're going to have a specific presentation oh, cool. from an artist for like you know ten minutes cool. or something. So we can just have a dialogue about what's happening. So we'll have Devin Kelly Yordan, um, my husband Rafi, mm -hmm. will be doing something between his music and also what he's been making on his websites recently. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have a bunch of different artists from here and further off coming. As part of that. Yeah, as part of that project. But the email today, the reason it kind of tied into this virtual gallery concept, whether you realized it or not, <laughs> was it had a link to your Patreon site. Mm -hmm. And so very interesting. This is yet another virtual tool for artists to use. We've been talking about Zoom workshops, the virtual gallery on Adobe, and, and the Patreon site is very interesting because as an individual artist, you're operating. You know how do you how do you support yourself? How do you how do you also display your work? How do you you can blog on it? You can do various things. Mm -hmm. And so I was when I was looking at your site today, it's like oh she's got a virtual gallery of her driveway show on there. And it was like, how nicely that tied together just an hour before, <laughs> before the talk today. So talk about Patreon and how that, and I might be, be mispronouncing that. I think but it's Patreon. I think yeah. it's because it's pa patron. Patron Patreon. with, a, with yeah. a little E in there. Um, talk about that and how you got hooked up on that. I got hooked up on that because it's what Ani DeFranco uses. Well, and, there you go. I, and I was like, okay, that was enough for me. <laughs> But I, you know, when, when we pivoted to this online, these online events, I, I was like, oh, okay, so I need to have a Zoom account 
and then I'm I want to hold this space for artists to come together like mm -hmm. that was really my focus was to really support and empower the making process right That's sort of my my gig when it comes right. to community arts um, and it's nice to have a little bit of support I also do a lot of like um, community advocacy and organization um, so it, I, I set that up as a way for people to contribute $6 a month, $16 a month, $30 a month, just to like, if they enjoy what I do and right. how I support the community, they can right. make that ongoing pledge, which is nice. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you, all my Patreons. <laughs> well, it's helpful. <laughs> it does sometimes save the bank accounts, I have to say. <laughs> well, and it's like everyone, whether you're an individual artist, or a gallery, or a musician. Everyone right now is trying to, mm -hmm. to scrabble to make ends meet. And it's hard enough under the best of circumstances, and it's really hard under these circumstances, particularly for visual artists, because I feel like that's just a tough one for them. Well, and, I, and also I think we're at, the, we're at this, this juncture now because the virtual world has been flooded you know, I mean, true. Before you had it, it, it was very different, and, and people would go because they, you know, they were searching around to look for something in particular and it was or whatever, unique. and it was unique. Yeah. But now it's like everyone is on as on, a presence. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and that's good and bad. You know, I think that um, uh, it's, I think it's more useful, let's say, in the winter time because people, you know, aren't. Mm -hmm really aren't they want it during during the summer they want to get out and, and yeah. do stuff, and yeah. stuff as much as they possibly can and all of that you know even though unless we had a major lockdown again you know then that would be would still provide that right? well but, one of the things and i know you and i have talked about this but one of the things that became really clear to me through the the shelter in place of the late winter and spring was that here in Washington County in the winter, we're pretty isolated anyways. Most artists are. And most yeah. artists are. And even, um, you know, it, it made me really start looking at, and, and I actually have, I, I did a whole, pro I'm doing a project with the Copscook Institute around this, around um, looking at that comparison of making an isolation while also being in community and exploring themes together right mm -hmm. and and in what ways are we allowed to even be more connected in some ways because everyone said you know i heard from somebody who i hadn't heard from in 20 years i'm connecting with this person and so there's also this within the isolation there's also this strange diff new connectivity mm -hmm. that's forming right that's true that's and true. new creativity New creativity for sure. Lots of new creativity. Absolutely. And collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And we won't. Yeah. We talked about the first art talk was about the life in Washington County project, mm. we, which we won't go into again. But that was a perfect example of this project as a result of COVID mm -hmm. that brought thirty plus writers, artists, um, musicians, dancers, visual artists mm -hmm. um, together and creating these, these mini videos, which I would never have, and it forced us all to learn things we didn't know. Like I had never done videoing before and we all had to do our own yes. video. So it pushed all of us in ways, some with more success <laughs> than others. And, well, I think everyone was successful, but there was frustration. But these are the things that are, the creativity I feel, I'm pushed to be more creative than I ever have been. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm grateful for that. Even our collaboration with the Art Walk came about as I was actually following up on the radio show, talking about, well, since we're in COVID, are you, do you, should I still air the yes, show? I re, yes, yes. I revisited it, and then you, we started talking about, you started talking about your isolation gallery, which was a window gallery, mm -hmm. and you said, well, what, what's the art gallery doing? And that was how the Art Walk was born, which was a, a, a way to, to get out and about walking safely mm -hmm. outside on self-guided art tours looking at windows. Collaboration, and collaboration. in isolation. Exactly. <laughs> and we ended up, I think the first map, we had um, close to 40 participants. Yeah. In April, yeah. in 
Eastport, a combination of almost a 50-50 mix of businesses and homes. Mm -hmm. And I, I know about you, but I'm particularly proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been, we've been going great guns ever since. Yeah, I was just <laughs> grateful that I had a collaborator to work on it with. <laughs> it's like, yes. So um, this has just been an interesting time, and that, and I would say the Art Walk is an example of, even though it doesn't seem virtual, it had a virtual component because uh, we were creating physical galleries, but a lot of people, I don't know if they ever actually saw the windows, but we posted on Facebook, and, and it created, there was a social media presence. And that goes back to the idea that we were talking about capturing images. How do you capture the images of the artwork? and what I've been learning during this time is really capturing an artwork in place. So even the reflections in the windows. Exactly. And, I, I learned, a, I, yeah. I did a lot of the uh, photography up and down the streets right. and um, and learning how to, to feature the home in the window just as much as the artwork and create yeah. that interplay. Yeah. And I found that in my driveway, open driveway studio sale too, there was well, the I, boat in the back. Yeah, and we have boats and cars and, you know, chickens. And, and everybody was, you know, it was all kind of like, you could place it together, which is one of the joys of the gallery, too, is to see the curation and how it all comes together. Well, and Stephanie mentioned that. And it's kind of an interesting idea of, in terms of photographing our works and have them within a context. Right. So the four by four you know, have a quarter by it, or, <laughs> or a chicken in the photo <laughs> for scale. <laughs> so it, those are all the challenges that, that you know, drive you to, to be imaginative and creative. Okay, so we're going to get back to the draw-a-thon. Okay. So this original, this original interview back in February, pre-COVID, pre PC, um, we talked about, we were talking about an upcoming draw thon event, and you used to do these in New York. Yes. When so, I was, so talk about that. Well, Tell I used to that. do them at Pratt. They would do an overnight drawing night called the draw thon It was like a 12-hour marathon. From, from dusk till dawn drawing marathon. There'd be drums, and like, you know, it would have like 200, 300 people drawing. And so, and mo live models. And live and models. And then uh, I worked with some friends, and we did a version of that on Saturday nights that had um, with Michael Allen, and he he would his really the director, and we would have costumes and live music, and we a gr big group of artists. So I've always I've modeled um, here in Eastport and Lubeck since I moved here twelve years ago, and. I always have had this like hole in my heart to make something like that happen here because I, I, I think that the community would respond it's really. It's a perfect fit. Yeah, it's a really good <laughs> fit for us. Cause especially we have so many interesting performers. Anyway, so, you know, again, Joan, you were like, so what's happening with the draw -thon? And I was like, well, I guess I can hold it online. <laughs> like, flying by the seat of my pants. And um, and I I had I had each time each drawathon it's the fourth Saturday of every month it's at seven thirty we co-host with the art center which has been so wonderful I get to have Mark Macy's incredible MC. support and I get to have Lauren Koss's incredible support and so grateful for those two right now and everything they're doing for our arts community the, and here 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 to yeah. And we get performers from all over. Dwayne Ingalls has been doing music and performing lately. We had Jean Nichols. I often model. I did one. I did the first yeah, one. Yeah, you, and I think you're doing the I, next I one. I signed up. I haven't got, I said I was going to try out my looping machine. Yeah. When is that? Two weeks from now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I better get on that. Um, <laughs> and we do a storytelling portrait. So again, it's like a, it's a full portrait and I'll be still. And then I'll start telling you a story about my chicken and the dog and the dog. I think you need your head, head piece on. Oh, yeah. thank you. It's important to be um, a woodland creature sometimes. <laughs> um, and so that so so we'll do a pose like that. So it's it's really an experimental place, but it's it's just amazing watching this community of artists and performers growing because that's the yeah. coolest thing 
I now have people from the art center community from the Washington County community coming to me saying oh I have an idea right and so it's really just an experimental place and it's it's really where creativity and community meet <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I slept>. oh, <laughs> <original. laughs> well and it, and it does seem to follow along with again that life in Washington County project it's it's, totally. it's sort of a little not a version of that but there are elements of that that sure. are being incorporated now, Jude, have you ever done anything like that, like drawing marathons or crazy, debauched evenings? Of... Have you ever paint, stayed up painting all night? Of course. <laughs> but, in a, but in a communal <laughs> but, environment, that's the question. Not, well, no, not really. Oh. You know, honestly, I mean, I think, um, you know, again, I was in a different era, almost, right. you know, in many ways. And different, I mean, you know, we, Chicago city, urban versus rural, and yeah. although you, you started in New, in New York. York. Never yeah. mind. And, um, I mean, we used to do some pretty crazy stuff out in Cal Arts, mm -hmm. yeah, out in California. That was, yeah, Con conceptual, conceptual yeah. work, you know. So yeah, performances and things, and things like that, like that. And being part of, yeah, that was yeah. all. But you know, not not actually doing a draw thon or so anything. So here's like an that, opportunity. Cool. I mean, it's great. So that sounds like a lot of fun. The, and there's an opportunity coming up very soon. <laughs> um, it's not an all night thing. It's a two hour window. Yeah. Until until we're free again from yeah. our shackles, from our COVID shackles. And as Ann said, it's the fourth Saturday of every month. Yep. Seven thirty to nine thirty ish. <laughs> and and we normally do some gestures, a portrait, some longer poses and explain what a gesture is. I had to ask ask these can questions. I, can I get up? You can you can get up at any time. I don't know, can you see me? Is my head still Keep in the screen? filming, it's all good. <laughs> so a gesture, I would just hold a pose for a minute, two minutes, and then you quickly sketch it out. And then um, throughout the evening, we lengthen the poses so you can get more finished drawings. But it's it's a sweet way to like loosen yourself up and just like get free, get free, and like not care about what you're making. Because which is good because the first time I did that and I did the gestures, they all look like stick figures. <laughs> I had all these stick figures in one, you know, I'd be like, <laughs> it was really sad. I, I mean, it was embarrassing. Thank God I was in the privacy of my own home on Zoom. Jeez. <laughs> so um, just to kind of summarize, I think, gosh, we've covered a lot of uh, a lot of the activities we've done, as I said, both virtual or a combination of virtual and physical. The gallery here, 35 years, woohoo! No Whoa. mean feet. We are open two more weeks. Well, at the, yeah. depending on when this airs, we're open August September. Yeah, we'll be we'll be close. The last day will be the 27th of September this, because that'll be the last Sunday that we're open. Yeah. But we successfully opened for two months in this crazy time, three days a week. We actually had a, we one. had again uh, our COVID bar. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which was zero. <laughs> Which was zero. Um, <laughs> Cynthia Morse from the Breakwater said it was a good COVID day today yeah. <laughs> because her sales, it wasn't necessarily a good normal day, but, and we had a really good Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. So things have been good. Virtual gallery is online at eSportGallery.com. And we've also done some other programs, which we're we which have. we will be putting on yes. you know, with the music and with our literary, with our literary evenings. Those yeah. are things that we wanted to make sure that we had online too. So well, we we took advantage of this fantastic deck um, because it's it it worked out great because the location, um, the fact that it's it's a good sized space where we could have the the speakers or the musicians be safe away from from the um, any event attendees and people can spread out nicely on the rocks and so we've had a series of four pop-up concerts we wait till the last minute to announce them because we don't want to um, encourage huge crowds not that Eastport ever has huge crowds but um, we've had two literary events this is our second art talk so we've had um, eight or nine events this summer, which I say, well done, wow, wow. Eastport Gallery. We did all right. Well done, Eastport <laughs> Gallery. And I'm not, and I'm not too proud to say that, um, or sh I have no shame either. Yeah. Um, but we've we found that people have been really starved for mm -hmm. live anything, 
Yeah. Um, and so the virtual component's great. People will be able to see this online. We've been broadcasting. The other cool thing is all of these events have been also broadcast on Shed Radio we've, uh, on two different days. So we've, we've, we're really stretching this out. And as Jude said, with winter coming, we've actually got some cool things planned for the winter because now that we, you know, maybe a couple, I haven't talked to Laura yet, maybe a couple <laughs> literary events, why not? Yeah. She did them via Zoom yeah. with people in Costa Rica, so why can't we do that in February? We might be doing a few artist interviews. We'll do artist interviews, we'll have the virtual gallery up, uh, the windows, we're going to carry on the window, the art walk tradition with the windows. So. It's ki it's kind of given us um, a year it's round. A good boost, actually. Boost. We're doing okay. We're doing the good. kids are all right. The yeah. kids are all right, and then and then with respect to what Anne's doing, um, all of these activities are there are links on the Eastport Arts Center website, Facebook page, and then we'll try to on our Facebook page put a link to your Patreon site too sure. because there's you've got some cool stuff on there too. Um, but thank you. Wow. I'm exhausted wow. thinking about all we've done. <laughs> well, and now that I'm stepping down as president of the gallery, I'll might be able to enjoy some of your <laughs> events. We're, we're not going to be talking about that. <laughs> sure. We'll cut that out. We'll cut that. No, we can. But we're just not going to talk any further about that. <laughs> right. Okay, Jude Kemp, current president of the Eastport Gallery. Thank you very much for, for all you've done the past several years, and also just getting us really getting us up and running this year, doing all the videography, except we've got, right now we've got Robin Farron, Robin Farron because uh, <laughs> kind Jude's enough off. to run the camera. Thank and you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. We know you, we know you got your chops, so thanks for being here. You're welcome. And thanks to Anne, Anne Shields Hopkins, who I really enjoyed collaborating. I mean, this has been a real, real treat the past several months, so I'm going to cry. Oh. I'm very clamped. I'm very clamped so, I, I know, I have to throw, that's my buzzword for these talks. I have to get for clamped in there at least once. Thank you, John. So, yes, yeah, thank thanks, you. John. Thank, thanks to everybody, and um, who knows, we might have another art talk sometime this winter. Sounds yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. Oh, Bye. Thank you.